Hello and welcome back to Anton Math and in this video we're going to be looking at some new trigonometric identities the addition and subtraction formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent and they are as follows we have that for sine sine of s plus t is sine of s times cosine t plus cosine s times sine t sine of s minus t is sine s cosine t minus cosine s sine t cosine of s plus t is cosine s cosine t minus sine s sine t cosine of s minus t is cosine s cosine t plus sine s sine t and for tangent we have these quotients tangent of s plus t is tangent of s plus tangent of t over one minus tangent of s tangent of t and tangent of s minus t is tangent of s minus tangent of t over 1 plus tangent of s tangent of t. Now for all of these formulas, um, different people remember them in different ways. You should become very comfortable with these formulas if you're in a pre-calculus course. As uh, typically on a test you won't have anything to refer to. You'll need to be able to uh, know what these are off the top of your head. But for both of the sine formulas, notice we have a mix. We have sine, cosine, cosine, sine, where we keep the variables in order. So we have sine s cosine t, then cosine s sine t in both cases. And if we're adding here, we're adding over here. If we're subtracting here, we're subtracting over here. For cosine, it's a little bit different. We can still keep the variables in order, although this isn't as important here. Uh, cosine s plus t or minus t, we see we've, we have cosine s cosine t at the beginning, sine s times sine t at the end, and the signs switch. So if we're adding inside the argument of cosine, we're subtracting these two terms from each other on the right. If we're subtracting in the argument of cosine, we're adding on these two terms on the right. Now for tangent, notice that both of these, for s plus t and s minus t, they look fairly similar. The only difference is the sign. Now something to note is that we always have two different signs. We're either going to have plus on top and minus on bottom, or minus on top and plus on bottom and you can kind of take a lead from what we have in the argument on the left. If we have s plus t in the argument, that means we're going to have positive on top. s minus t, that means we're going to have negative on top, and the bottom sign will always just be the opposite of whatever the top sign is. Now these are just the way that I kind of remember these formulas. Um, really the tricky part here, once you are familiar enough that you kind of see the format of the formulas right away is remembering which sign to use. So make sure to come up with your own ways of remembering this as you'll need to use this information. Now let's look at where these come from and I'm going to take a look at um, let's take a look at one of these cosine formulas and I'll de derive one of these for you and the rest of them can be derived in a similar way. Now really you could derive all of the sine and cosine formulas by the method I'm about to do now and then for the tangent formulas, we can derive these just by taking the quotient of sine s plus t over cosine s plus t or sine s minus t over cosine s minus t and then simplifying down into this form. So let's take a look at one of these cosine identities. Let's see if we can prove one of these. And the way we're going to do this is by using the unit circle. Now I've already set up a little unit circle here to help us out. So on my unit circle over here, I've denoted some distance in the positive direction as t and then I've got an additional distance of s, and it doesn't matter what these t and s are, uh, this is just to diagram it out so we can set up some equations. So this whole distance from p1 to p2 around the, the outside of the circle is going to be s plus t, and I've also gone minus s in the negative direction. Now what we're going to do is we have these points here, and we're going to use our distance formula to try to come up with some way of equating these. So let's take a look at this distance between P2 and P1, and we're also going to look at this distance between Q1 and Q2. Now something to note, I have an arc length here of ST, and I have another arc length here of ST. Right? These arc lengths are equal, so right away I know that the distance between P1 and P2 is the same as the distance between Q1 and Q2. Now just a reminder of our distance formula, we have this distance formula that the distance between two points x1, x2, sorry, x1, y1, and x2, y2, this is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences. 
So in other words, the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And really what we're doing here, uh, we're really just creatively using the Pythagorean theorem. We take a look here, let's say I want to find this distance between p1 and p2. If I draw a line here, I get this right triangle, don't I? And I know that this distance here along the bottom is the x value at p1 minus the x value at p2. This is my x1 minus x2. This distance of this side over here, this is my y1 minus y2. And so this total distance between p1 and p2 by Pythagorean theorem is going to be the square root of x1 minus x2 plus y1 minus y2. So really whenever we're using this distance formula again we're really just creatively using our Pythagorean theorem. So we can think of this as kind of using right triangles. Okay, So that's just a little bit of an aside on where that distance formula comes from but let's come back to our problem and see if we can equate these two together. So as we observed before the distance between p1 and p2 in the graph that we have over on the right is going to be equal to the distance between q1 and q2 because both of these line segments are subtending arcs of equal length so these line segments themselves are equal so let's take a look at what this looks like distance of p1 p2 by applying my distance formula I have my x1 is 1 my x2 taking a look at p2 and I've written it up here p2 is the point cosine s plus t sine s plus t so my x value for p2 is cosine s plus t so this is all squared plus now looking at my y values my y1 is 0 and this is minus my y2 which is sine of s plus t and I'm going to take this whole quantity squared. Now this is equal to the distance from q1 to q2. Now q1 is cosine t sine t. right? This is just the terminal point determined by t. q2 is the terminal point determined by negative s. So the point there is cosine negative s sine negative s. And we're going to go ahead and use our even and odd properties here. Plugging in my x1 is sine t. Oh, sorry cosine t minus now my x2 over here cosine of negative s that's the same thing as positive cosine of positive s because cosine is even so this is just cosine s so this whole quantity squared that's my x1 minus x2 from our formula plus, now looking at the y values, the y value of q1 is sine t minus, and the y value of q2 is sine of negative s. Now we know sine is odd, so this is actually just negative sine of positive s, so the two negatives cancel and we get plus sine s, and again we're taking this whole quantity squared looks a little complicated but we're going to be able to simplify now we have roots on both sides so to get rid of these roots we're just going to square both sides and then I'm going to go ahead and expand both sides to get this equality so we've squared both sides so the square roots are gone expanding 1 minus cosine s plus t I have 1 minus 2 cosine s plus t plus cosine squared s plus t plus and now squaring this side here I have 0 minus sine s plus t so that's just negative sine s plus t squared so that gets rid of my negative and I have plus sine squared s plus t it's all equal to now looking at my right hand side squaring this first side I have cosine squared t 
minus 2 cosine t cosine s plus cosine squared s I'm going to need to bleed over a little bit here now squaring out this side I have plus sine squared t plus 2 sine t sine s plus sine squared s now we take a look at this this looks pretty complicated but we have some easy simplifications here. Notice here I have cosine squared plus sine squared of s plus t. So by my Pythagorean theorem, this is just 1. Here, this cosine squared and sine squared of t become 1 from my Pythagorean theorem. And this cosine squared s and sine squared s become 1 from my Pythagorean theorem as well. So let's take note of this and simplify this down. I have 1 plus 1, which is 2, minus I still have this 2 cosine s plus t and that's all I have now on my left hand side right we simplified this all down to 1 so I have 1 plus 1 is 2 minus 2 cosine s plus t and on my right hand side we simplified these two terms down to 1 and these two terms down to 1 so adding those together we get 2 and then I have a minus 2 cosine t cosine s plus 2 sine t sine s okay looking pretty good now I want to try to simplify this down I have a 2 on both sides so I can cancel these 2's out with each other and then I have a negative 2 here that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So dividing this left side by negative 2, I'm left with cosine of s plus t is equal to, now I've divided this side by negative 2 as well, so this negative 2 goes away, and I have cosine t cosine s. and now I've divided this plus 2 sine t sine s by negative 2 so the 2's cancel but I'm left with a negative so this becomes negative sine t sine s and we're done cosine of s plus t equals cosine t cosine s minus sine t sine s it's exactly what we have for our addition formula for cosine Okay, so that's how we prove that one. We can do a similar thing with sine of s plus t using the same diagram. And once we have the addition formulas, the subtraction formulas are just plugging in a negative t and then using the even odd properties of cosine to solve those. And as I said before, we can find tangent by taking the ratio sine over cosine and then simplifying down into this form. So these are our addition and subtraction formulas. So make sure to become familiar with these and in the next two or three videos we're going to be doing examples focused on these formulas um, so we'll see you there